Happy Flag Day. Yes. All right. So on Monday. Mm-hmm. Last Monday. The well, last past, Monday. This past yeah. Monday. This past Monday, yeah. Not next Monday. Yeah, this past Monday. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> Two days ago. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Today's Wednesday. All right. Yeah, we had on the mobster, mafia guy. We did. Michael Francis. Uh, Michael Francis. Did I say it right this time or no? You did. Michael Francis. All right. And so we had him on. We were talking about the fact that he's going to be doing a show uh, June 24th. It's a Saturday night, 7 o'clock, Lorraine Palace Theater. Yes. And uh, it was a great interview. He, in fact, at the end of the interview, said it was one of his favorite interviews that he's done. Yeah. It was really flattering. It was great. I'm still waiting for him to put the episode up on his Facebook and YouTube or whatever it is. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Well, now we at least have some reach in to push. Yes. <laughs> so I get it, and a message yesterday from lovely lady Marie, who helped set this whole thing up, mm-hmm. and she says Michael was very impressed with you two. Right. And then she says, wanted to know. If your buddy, your partner on the show, would do me a favor or do him a favor. Right. And I said, well, I don't know. What's the favor? And <laughs> the mafia guy. Yeah. The mob wants you to be security for him <laughs> at the meet and greet for the show. That is correct, sir. <laughs> and I have accepted. <laughs> Now, I don't know how this came about. I don't know what happened. But, yeah, he wants you to be security. That's right. For the show. Now, I'm kind of offended that I wasn't asked to be part of that. But at the same time, I did inform all of them that I need an extra backstage pass because I have no leg and I can't drive. And so I think that would prohibit me from the the security security detail. (laughs) So I was wondering what happened. You talked to them, right? I did. I talked to I talked to his um to his guy Chris today. And um and uh you know, he told me what what's going on and and it, it's you know, cuz it's when you told me about it, even up until I talked to his guy today, I thought it was just sort of a honorary thing you you know what i mean i didn't think it was really security i thought it was like all right you're on the detail you know basically that's it no i have to go for a meeting before the show at a hotel to get briefed on the on the security of this (laughs) (laughs) but yeah i i will be what are you gonna do did they explain like what you're I Job was told, is? Yeah, I was told that I, basically as Michael moves around, I'll be kind of on his on his side to make sure nobody comes at him and nobody gets to him and nobody gets out of hand or whatever. Both both with the um the actual stage thing as well as the um the meet and greet after. That's just unbelievable to me. Like that is like I wonder what he saw in you because you know when we're sitting together. Yeah, I mean it's not like there's that much of a difference in you don't look like a, a big guy. No, but I am. I mean <laughs> when I sit down next to you, it, I'm like I look up to you because you're a tall guy and everything. Like I yeah. like I sit down next to him. Hey, Chris, how you doing? <laughs> but I mean that's awesome. Yeah, I, I'm so stoked, man. I I definitely. I and it's funny because my only my only question was do I have to do I have to carry, you know? And because you know, I will, you know, if if they deem that necessary, I absolutely will. I just need to know, you know. But but, dude, I I from now on, from this day forward, my tagline is going to be Chris Aiken, mob enforcer, because <laughs> I'm a mob enforcer now. We're talking about a guy that didn't go into the witness protection program or anything like that. So we're yeah. talking about a guy that, you know, it does have enemies, I guess, out there. So I would probably, think so, yeah. I'm assuming that there's still some alive that are pissed that the guy got out of the, the mafia and, and didn't want to be a part of it anymore. And now he you know. just had a big fight with Sammy the Bull, for God's sakes. 
Sammy the Bull is pissed at this dude, and now you're going to be security. Yeah. Now and I thought the I'm, entire time, I'm like, all right, do I sit near Chris? Can I stand behind Chris? I'm not standing anywhere near you. Like, I'll be off. For, <laughs> You'll be calling my, me from the venue. Hey, what's up? <laughs> hey, how are you? I, I still get my backstage pass, but I'm going to stay way backstage. Like, I'm going to watch from the side of the stage where you guys, there's no direct angle of line right. of sight. So. <laughs> well, I am it, honored. I'm honored to do it. That's cool. Uh, I I can't wait to do it. And my mom is really a big mob person, and I invited her to come out and do it. And she she could not have been more excited. She 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 gets off on my celebrity sometimes, but not often. Now you I know, most to... most right. of the time she doesn't know who the hell I'm talking about. When I'll be like, oh, I'm meeting so and so. She's like, yeah, okay, that's great. You know. Uh, yeah, now half the time I I should say when I was sitting there thinking about the entire thing last night, I was so happy. I was like very. One, I think it's an honor that, you know, the guy liked us. Yeah. And liked much. the interview, liked the questions, like, you know, mm -hmm. we had a good time on the show and that was fun. I um, thought it was cool that they said we could have, you know, these all access passes. And I think that sure. would be good to check out. I'm looking forward to that. Um, but then I started thinking about the bad side of this. I was like, I know what's going to happen. I know my luck in life. <laughs> I'm going to be back working with fucking, you know, Mike Jusalka again because <laughs> Chris is going to take off. Now he's going to be. Uh, you know, Michael's you know security boss as he goes around the country doing tours and, and stuff like that. And he's going to be often you know doing the security detail, and I'm going to be sitting there trying to figure out you know if I can get Billy Moore to actually return my phone call to talk about the fucking police thing. But, <laughs> so it, you're going to just take off into this wild mafia sunset, and I'm going to be stuck. I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> that sounds like more work than I'm willing to do. I'm willing to do it for a night, but that's about it. Ever do bands? Ever do security for bands? I've done a little, not, not, a, I mean, never as a job per se, but, um, like friends bands or whatever, I've definitely kind of held the line and, and as you're well aware, I certainly am not afraid to throw a punch. So, right. you know, I've definitely been in more <laughs> than, more than my share of fights. So I'm not afraid of violence in any way. So See, I, I, and I don't been, think there'll be any, come on. No, I don't, probably not, but I, I've always been more of like the lover not a fighter kind of guy i've been in very few fights but some you know pretty good ones but i actually did security for a while i was a bouncer okay. at the basement club in the flats back in sure the, remember the basement yeah yeah and so you know i was actually one of those guys that would <coughs> get into fights and drag the people out of the bar when they were doing sure you know, act like an ass and you know I, I had a great time doing that kind of stuff that was yeah. fun uh, i was also a security guard for the rock and roll hall of fame when it was okay. being built Right. And so I was just a jackass who sat in my car and had a little yellow light that I plugged into my cigarette hanger right. and put it on top of my car and just sat there trying to keep homeless people out of the hole. Sure. Uh, but I, uh, <laughs> as, as far as security goes, oh, I did do security at the, uh, the powerhouse down in the flats. Okay. And my job, I had a little time clock that I walked around with and I had a key and you had to go around mm -hmm. to different spots and check in to make sure that you were checking stuff out and like the worst thing that ever happened to me there was i found a couple having sex underneath the stairs <laughs> of the powerhouse and right i actually said just finish and i watched and then they left and <laughs> but, so i wasn't much of a security guard right i worked I, at security at the ix center okay and it was overnight so right you know, like a show would come to town it'd be pitch black in there and it would be my Sorry, fat ass walking around. <laughs> what am I going to do? Yeah. I had a flashlight. So if somebody right. came in and wanted to rob the place, I wasn't going to do literally anything. Right. Yeah. Uh, you were sleeping for an hour, getting up, taking a walk around, and going back to sleep for another hour. And then sometimes I'd hide under a merchant table if I heard a noise because I mean, it really was kind of a terrifying place to be at alone <laughs> overnight. Uh, but so as far as security goes, I've never had to do something like this. Sure. This is well, a I big deal. Believe it or not, I have done security like this before in the military. You know, when I first got to Korea, the first seven months that I was there, that was my job. I was a bodyguard for the commanding general of Armed Forces Korea. That was my job. So I, I actually do have experience doing it. But, you know, I, I'd imagine this is a little different than a, you know, than a four-star general. So... <laughs> This is, I, I just can't believe that it's, that it's happening. It's so bizarre, man. I, I was saying to somebody today, I was talking to him about this and I was like, 
how does this crazy stuff happen in my life? <laughs> you know, it's like uh, my life is, you know, I see everybody else's life and no, none of this kind of wacky stuff happens. But my life, it's always something that's like, oh, now, now you're doing security for a mob boss. What? <laughs> how the hell does that happen? Well, I expect that because you are security detail that you will make sure that my parking space is, is good to go and <laughs> there's no bombs planted underneath my car, at least. Well, uh, I, I would hope. Full search. <laughs> now you're going to have to hire me away from Michael to get all that care. Then I was going to ask you, I mean, is this something that's like a paid gig or is it just kind of like know. a... You know what? I talked to his guy today and I didn't even ask. I don't care. I don't... I, I mean, it's not like I'm going to be like, hey, man, give me a hundred bucks. You know, I'm not... I'm not I'm, forget it. You know, I don't care. Forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> don't be the next Daniel Penny. No, don't worry. Yeah, what happens if somebody does rush the stage? What, what are you going to do? Are you going to tackle somebody? I'm going to tackle a good chance them. That you could get sued. Way it goes, you take somebody yes. out, man, and like it's your life now. The... Yeah, I know. Whatever. Believe me, if they get up there, I'll take them all the way out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if I'm going to go to jail for it, I'm going to go to jail for a good reason, not not for not for pushing some asshole. Have you ever been to Lorraine Palace Theater? Uh, no, I have not. It's a it's a nice joint, but it's large, man. So if you got to carry somebody out of there, um, you're gonna need to like. Hoof it up a, a long need a wheelbarrow. Yeah, you're gonna need to really because it's uphill and it's a, a ways. Right. <laughs> eh, I'll uh, be fine. Last I time I was there was when I was given this the house that I have. Wow. Well, that's I nice. John Rich there. Right. Well, from what I'm told, I will not be too far away from Michael at all. I'll be like right, kind of like on his side. So. Sounds like fun to me. I'm just, I'm excited. Look, I'm excited to go. The worst part about it to me is I'm actually going to have to work instead of just sitting there watching and enjoying the show. I was going to say, somehow you got roped into actually having a job during something yeah. that was supposed to be just fun. Something that was just supposed to be just fun times. Y'all are going to have fun, and you're going to have to tell me how it was. <laughs> I, like I said, I'm going to be watching from the side. Yeah. Because uh, I think that will just be kind of cool. Hopefully they can give me a seat over there, but... Uh, I think the whole thing sounds like a lot of fun, to be honest. It is. It's going to be great. I can't wait. It starts at, like, what, 7 o'clock, I think? 7 o'clock, yeah. And I think he does, like, an hour, hour and Probably half, an hour, hour and a half. So I think, and I don't think and then the meet and greet bands for stuff like this. No. Right? But then there's the meet and greet after. That's probably another hour. The, yeah. I can't imagine they have, like, an opening mafia guy or, like, some lower <laughs> tier mafia <laughs> yeah. guy that comes out and says, hey, this is what happened to me. And then he puts the real mafia guy on. Yeah, so, here's Johnny the Pig Pagano. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I hate to be the opening act on that one. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how it all works. I, I, I guess I'll find out here because I got to give them some names of people that are that are going to go with me. But um, I'll, I'll get the story then. Am I going to wear a suit or tracksuit? Whatever they need me to wear. Yeah, do they give you like a security shirt? That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, you get like a free security shirt. Wow. Uh, they ain't gonna give me. I know me. They ain't giving me nothing. They're, I'm just gonna show up, and they're gonna be happy that this big caveman looking monster is sitting next to Francis Michael. Yeah, Francis. I'll, I'll tell you right now. I've known you for a while, and we uh, went out what a month ago or something to the yeah to the club. comedy show. And yeah, ain't nobody getting by you. No, there's no, nobody gonna, gonna get happen. by me. And let's be honest, people take a look, they're gonna think twice about coming at me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the that's the joy of me is you know that I definitely look the part of a little bit crazy. Yeah, you're going to be very intimidating, I think, on that. Stage. Yep, I think so. So, and then maybe that's what he saw. Maybe he's watching the screen, going, "Look at this fucking monster." <laughs> it could very well be. Yeah, what the hell do I look like? So, again, I'm going back to trans. Well, you got I that. actually now I know that I'm going to go ahead and, and sign up to be a woman on my driver's license. You've got the sophisticated glasses on and a respectable beard and whatnot. I just, especially when, on Monday when I didn't have a hat on and the hair was just all over the place, you know, I just look like Captain Caveman. You know, it's just a, you know, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of hair and big. <laughs> I went from Seth the Barbarian to Seth the Broad. <laughs> the Broadbarian. <laughs> I mean, what the hell happened? <laughs> How tall am I? 5'9". Not that tall. No, but you are intimidating. Yeah. There's no way you're 5'9". Get the fuck out of here. I am. I'm 5'9". 
How tall do you think I was? You're tall. I'm five nine. No, I am. I always have been. Five nine. We're gonna have to try that out on Saturday because I'm right. bringing a tape measure. Go ahead. I'm five I'm nine. That one. I'm not taller than that. Why would I fake that I'm shorter? I don't know. I'm. I'm thinking maybe you grew and you just don't know it. <laughs> because I've seen you in person. I'm a tall 5'9", I guess. You are a tall 5'9", no <laughs> doubt about it. But now, after this conversation, after finding out that I'm not going to be um, allowed anywhere near Michael because my friend is going to push me out of the way, uh, <laughs> I am going to absolutely apply to be a woman on my driver's license. And <laughs> hey, you get close to my client, I'll be kicking that fake leg right out from under you. Yeah, see? <laughs> I see how this works. See that? <laughs> it's my well, client now. <laughs> yeah. And, well, I'm a fat guy, so you're going to have to drag my ass a long distance. You're going to have to get that wheelbar out. <laughs> I'll, let the, I'll let the staff handle that. I'll just get you with the zip ties, and then I'm done with you. So look at me here, tech when you're watching cameras. Yeah. Sending radio messages over your earpiece. <laughs> Couldn't I get a job like that? Yeah, we could have like a little walkie-talkies or something going on. Yeah. <laughs> I remember Glenn Beck came to the uh, radio studios one time. Okay. And you know, <coughs> obviously Glenn Beck is a great radio guy. A lot of people mm -hmm. know him. In fact, if you sign up for the Odyssey channel. Yes. Um, the four ninety nine a month, the extra content, I'll be putting up some bonus content either tomorrow or the next day uh, with an epic rant from one Glenn Beck. Uh, talking about what's going on in today's society, and I will respond right. to that because I think it's very cool. But anyways, he was at the, the radio station, and he shows up. Well, first, the day before, they sent one of their security detail into the building to like see where he's going to be, what hallways he has to walk down, and all that sure. stuff. Who would have thought the fucking president was going to be there? <laughs> right. And then when he does show up, he had to use a studio down the hall from us. And you know, From what I heard, he was a nice guy. I kind of just waved. Right. Like, you really couldn't get near him. The right. security guys were nice guys, but they did that. They had like in their sleeves well, the little microphone little things, and they had those, you know, ear pieces with like curly wire hanging down from the right. ear, and they were all talking into their their sleeves for Glenn Beck. Other. For Glenn Beck, wow! And then it was terrifying because <laughs> we were on the fourth floor. You could see out the window when he was leaving. He was walking out to his car. You know, his car, little, little yeah, his car limo. He started to pick him up. Right. And there was a woman who wanted to get her book signed. Right. And she started literally running at him with this book because she wanted to catch him before he got in the car. Okay. And we are all sitting upstairs going, oh, shit. She's about to get jumped. <laughs> Something's going to happen to this broad dude because you don't run at Glenn Beck without something right. happening. Right. And immediately there was like four guys. Hello. Hey, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> and they stopped her right in her tracks before she can get to him. But she just wanted a book sign and everything was right. cool. He's a very nice guy. But sure. Um, I, I've seen details like that a couple of different times. Okay. But never with a, a radio guy. I mean, usually it was like the governor was coming. And um, I think Stern gets that treatment, doesn't oh, I'm he? I'm sure he does. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't even go into his own workplace without guards. Yeah. When I met Stern, shit, what year was that? Had to be. What year did that one, the second book come out? Probably mid 90s. Oh, uh, which one was that? Uh, Miss America? Miss America? Howard's... I don't know. I, I have video of this somewhere, and I should play it on the show. Um, but I was waiting to see him, yeah, and I waited. Ninety-five, yeah, that makes sense. And I, I waited literally outside of a, a bookstore in an ice storm for three days to see this guy. <laughs> I had a cardboard box that I slept in, right. and I was literally like tenth in line uh, to see Howard. And we got there, and I was all excited. But he did come in with a whole bunch whole of army. security, and right? It's an army of people that protected that guy. Sure. Uh, but yeah, Governor, who's the governor before DeWine? Why am I drawing a blank on all this stuff? Governor before DeWine. Um, Kasich? Kasich. Yeah. You know, he would come in and, you know, he had security that would. Kasich was probably the best of the bunch of okay. all the people that I met with security details because he had his security come in like the day before to kind of like uh, just see where he was going to be and what entrance to go in and stuff like that. And Kasich ended up being a total douche. But. When we knew him and like you know hung out with him, he would literally just show up in an SUV. But he sat in the front seat. He was listening to 
the Red Hot Chili Pipers. Pipers. The Red Hot Chili Pipers. The bagpipe band. Oh God, are you kidding me? And <laughs> but he would and then he would make fun of me. Trip and I would just stand outside and the security was like next to none. And he would just hop out of the car and he told me that I looked stupid the long hair and told me to get a shave and all that kind of stuff. But he was just a nice guy and we hung out and just and he'd go up in the elevator with Trip and I without any security. Okay. So he was pretty cool, but uh, I'm expecting big things from you <laughs> on Saturday the 24th. Well, I'm hoping that nobody hears about me on the news on um, Saturday evening. That's all <laughs> I hope is that there's no news coming out of this thing, that everything is just nice and quiet and everybody comes and enjoys the show and leaves. I want you to show up in, yes, the suit, <laughs> thin tie, I want the hair slicked back. Yeah, pull the hair back. Yeah, I, I want. <laughs> I mean, I, it's you got to do the part. Dye the hair black. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have like the shoulder strap that you can see right. hanging out the coat, you know, so you can see something's underneath their coat, yeah. but you can't really see what's underneath the coat. I could wear like the the Sunny Corleone like gun gun oh, yeah. holster that's also like suspenders. <laughs> yeah, I want to see sunglasses on. And even if you don't have the glasses, like, the... even if you don't have like the uh, yeah, there, see like that. Yeah. All right, let's go. And then even if you don't have like an actual walkie-talkie thing, I want you to have something in your ear that looks like it. Mm. I mean, we got to make you look the part. Oh, I have that. I do have. Where is it at here? Somewhere here. Remind me what is Saturday the twenty fourth? Michael Franzese. I have the mafia earpiece. guy at Lorraine Palace Theater. Seven yeah, o'clock. Yeah, this earpiece. Well, this one. See, in, in yeah, that'll work. In ear monitor. Yeah. <laughs> I could wear my in ears. <laughs> so you're going to be security for the mafia. That's, That's right. going to be awesome. And then what my job though is, I have double secret probation, fucking cool guy, right? Stuff operations to do. Now I'm going to take video though, so I can post it and we can play it on the show. Absolutely. So that way oh, we yeah. can see everything that you're doing. I'm sure right. maybe I'll have to get permission from them to do it. No. But I'm going to take video of you being security guy and. Some of the stuff behind the scenes that goes on, so we can play it on the show. Sure, because I think that'll be pretty cool. That will be fun. Because <laughs> otherwise, thing, the I'm whole hoping thing is fun. I mean, it's, at it's, this point, I'm just hoping they have a buffet for me to have a, a snack. <laughs> by me. And then you're gonna get a call, security. Yeah, security. There's a fat dude with a fake leg eating all the buffet. Get this guy off the buffet. That's Michael's shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> Be, that's probably the worst thing you're going to have to deal with the entire th time, I hope, anyways. Probably. I hope I have nothing to deal with. I hope th I hope my only job is to keep my head on a swivel and listen to him talk about the mob. That's all I hope. And that's what the guy kind of made it sound like. Well, you could try. I don't recommend that, Jim. I, I'll just <laughs> tell you now. I'm going to do my job. I'm not doing it as an honorary thing. If somebody rushes the stage, I am going to kick the shit out of them. <laughs> that is for sure. Well, I mean, that's what you were hired to do. That's what I'm being would, hired to do is or, do that. I don't know about hired, but like you That's cast. what I'm being brought there to do. See, you know? I look at this like a mafia thing. Yeah, me too. The mafia guy pulls you into the, the room and he's... Yeah. Just when I thought I was out, they <laughs> pulled me back in. <laughs> Well, he's not Jim. Sorry. But, yeah, I uh, I look at it as the mafia is asking you for a favor here. So. Well, you know what they say. Some Someday I may have to. Well, you, you don't know what they say because you've never seen The Godfather. Don't say that. Well, you never have. Listening. I know I have it, but I've seen Goodfellas like 400 times. Yeah, but that's all the, all the, all the good phrases that I want to use here from The Godfather. I've seen the, the Danny Green movie 4,000 times. The Irishman. I've yeah, seen Bronx like, Tale 4,000 times. You kind of have to watch some of this stuff when you work with Triv. If you don't, you, you are screwed. I remember the first time Triv asked me, he's like, don't you have that clip? And it was a Pesci clip from Goodfellas. Okay. What am I, a clown? Do I amuse you? Right, right, right. And yeah. So Triv is saying that, and I, I said, I don't know what you're talking about. And I think that was the first time that Triv wanted me fired. Because I had no <laughs> clue what the hell he was talking about. And when he told me, I was like, all right, I'm going to go home. I got to watch all these movies. 
Right. And I started to I watched all of the ones that I know that he liked, except for the Godfather and stuff. I, I just couldn't get into it. How could you how could Triv have not made you watch The Godfather though? It's the most quotable movie of all of them. Because one, it's kind of out of my age range, I think. What year did that movie it's out come of out? My age reach too. Age seventy two. It was four. It's just it's the best movie ever made. The filmography of it looks a little bit shoddy to me. Stop. Are you kidding me? I don't know. I've never really attempted to watch it. Dude, Everybody it that is, talk to you said it's boring. You know what? When I see you on the 24th, I'm bringing you the box set. I'm going to hand you the box set on DVD, and you can watch it. And then you can tell me that it's boring, because it's not. It's fantastic. Look, and the worst part, let me tell you the worst part. So I was talking to the publicist for Michael. Yeah. And he goes, all right, are you a mob guy? I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, because, again, I've seen a lot of the other movies. Sure. And I, I've talked to Triv 4,000 times about, you know, the mafia and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And so I, I consider myself maybe not an aficionado, but I know some stuff about it, enough to be, you know, somewhat educated. Sure. But the publicist goes, all right, I'm going to quiz you. Okay. And he asked me a question about the Godfather. Of course. And I'm sitting there and I'm driving, not me, but I'm in the car at least, and so I was like, look, I'm driving. I have no idea. I, I, oh, it's so long ago since I watched it. And you know, I didn't want to say I've never seen the movie. Then I thought the interview was going to get canceled. What was the question he asked you? The five people that died at the end of the movie. Of Godfather 1? Yeah. And you had no idea of any of them? I think I rattled off like some names. Like, some names that were all wrong. Uh, Luca, Michael Corleone. Michael. I, I mean, I didn't even like the last names. It was all <laughs> names that sounded Italian to me. Yeah. I think I lost one. It was like a Tito. Uh, I don't know. It was, I was just going oh, off. Come on, there's Mo Green, Carlo, Tatalia, Cusano. Who's the fifth one? Uh, Barzini. There's your five. I think I said linguine, <laughs> spaghetti, pizza. Pizza. Ravioli. <laughs> but I tried to make it sound like, hey. <laughs> That's hilarious. It is what it is. <laughs> see, so see you come, huh? no, knowing knowing this, they're gonna um, they're gonna see you coming and not even let you in the door. This guy oh. never even saw the Godfather. Look, Stay at out. least I have an in. I know the security guard. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. But well, hey, not that night. I'm I'm on I'm on call. I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't helping you out. You know, you, you haven't seen the Godfather. I'm gonna watch it before we go to that show on, on, on right. Saturday the twenty fourth. All right. I will have all the knowledge that I need there you go. to watch him on stage and to be able to be let into the building. There you go. Perfect. You got to watch at least Godfather 1, if not 1 and 2. How many are there? Three. Was the third one bad? Third one's not great. There's a reissue of it. Look, this, this is how much I love The Godfather. I not only own it in physical box set, but I also own it in digital on my Amazon account. Including the re recently re recut uh, Godfather Three Coda edition, which takes the the bad way that they framed up Godfather Three when they released it in theaters and reworks it so it makes a lot more sense. So I own all of it. I am a total total fan. <laughs> yeah, here we are. I thought we were friends. Now you're big time in me. Well, you just, know, now, my now entire that, life is done, you know, dealt with big time in me. Now that I'm a mob enforcer, I don't have now, time for the little people. Anymore. I know, I know. You, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one to book the damn interview, and all of a sudden, Chris is going to be like riding with the limousine right. with damn the mafia. Right. Hey, I might be, I might be working some gas tax or something. As far as I'm concerned, hey, tell me what to do, Michael. Oh uh, yeah, as long as you slide me a couple of bucks. Hey. If he shows me how to have just one of those ten million dollar months, I'd be happy. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got no, no problem doing some of that stuff on the down low. Yeah, me either. Uh, <laughs> all right, well, fun, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that uh, again. June twenty fourth, seven right. o'clock, Lorraine Palace Theater. Michael Frenzy is actually the bigger story. Chris, security guard, <laughs> Aiken, <laughs> going to be protecting the mafia guy. Look at that. Uh, so, you, if you haven't got your tickets yet, yes, uh, I think it's going to be a one hell of a sight, and I think we're gonna have a good time. Yeah, we're definitely gonna have a good time. It's gonna be a so. Lot we're of fun. definitely going. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're definitely going. So uh, even if you don't care about Michael Francis, 
Yeah. The, the bigger attraction will be the two of us. Public I appearance think, by us somewhere. Look yeah, at that. So get your tickets. I'll be the guy with a fake leg with my phone up in the air. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a quick break. we got Tony Masaccio coming up in about two minutes. Huh, All right, cool. Hang on.